Now when it comes to static grass, we're all used to it and we've all seen it before. It comes in like hobby tubs and it's quite clumpy and sort of sticks to your fingers. And the main way of putting it on our war, mod, on our war games models bases, uh, you know, our, our model bases, is just to put a little bit of PVA down and then just get a clump and literally just drop it on to make clump effects. And that's fine, yeah, for our war games because they're little clumps. But you need to do it slightly different when it comes to terrain because that technique will not work. Now there's a bit of a myth in the war games community about static grass and that's that it's statically charged and will therefore automatically stand up when you put it down. That's a load of rollocks, okay? Complete load of rollocks. Anyone who tells you that, yeah, just you know, just ignore them. It's designed to be used with something like this, which is a static grass applicator and puts an electric charge through it to make it stand up. And this is the only, using static electricity is the only real way to actually get it to stand up. Now, there's a few other techniques which are more basic that you can get some good results with. And I'm gonna show you those now before I show you what this can do. Because obviously, if you're only doing a few pieces, you don't need a bit of equipment like this. I mean, if this costs about, 13 pound I think. Now before we go into that, the normal caveats with st static grass apply. If you're doing a small little job, hobby supplies are fine, but if you want to do something special or larger, you need to start looking at the railway people for different grades, for different colours, for different lengths, to buy in bulk and make savings, you know. This was like three pound, 54 pound, this was eight pound, you know, you can see the difference. So anyway, onto the techniques that of actually applying this. Now, there's two main ways that you can apply it without a static grass applicator. There's the clump technique, which we use in war games anyway, which is literally grabbing clumps and just sticking it on. Okay, and it produces a clumpy effect. And I'm gonna use that around the edges. Okay, because that will blend in really well with the tables. Now the other way is to come up with something like this. And all this is, it's a little test pot of my paints. Yeah, and I've just put some holes in the top. And that way, what you can do is you can literally shake it down, yeah, and put it on far more fine. And I don't know if you can see that coming out because it is actually quite fine. Yeah, but it is coming out quite thickly, okay? Now, you've still got the static problem, okay? And there's a way of dealing with this, and I'll show you that in just a second, yeah, when we actually get to it. I think you'll quite like it. So when it comes to putting the glue on, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to demonstrate here to be truthful. Okay, I don't think I'm going to do all of it because I'm, I'm probably do more of it with this because it's quicker and the results are far better. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put PVA down. Now with a lot of these, with a lot of sealing and putting stuff down, I use a 50-50 mix. With static grass, that doesn't work that well because what happens is, especially if it's got flow aid in, is it sucks all the grass and it makes like a mat effect and it's all trodden down it just doesn't look good at all okay so when it comes to what you call it working with pva what you really need to do working with static grass you need really need to use a thicker pva and the reason for this is so as it drops it can stick in a thick pva and actually stand up in the glue okay so all i'm going to do quickly to show you the clumping technique okay and what i'll do is i'll do it from this here, round to just about there, just so you can see what I'm doing, and then I'll work round in my own time. Okay, so all I'm going to do is, I'm literally going to run, neat PVA. Sorry about that, guys. Bear with me one moment. Sorry about that, guys. Bit of a madhouse here today. So as you can see, what I'm basically doing is, I'm just adding this PVA, water down PVA. Yeah, and as you can see, because it's wet, it is lifting the flock up yeah you can see it coming off on my brush there okay now don't be concerned about this obviously the water's got onto the original glue and you know it's just quite simply just lifting it up and off okay because obviously like I said before PVA is not a sealant and it's not easy doing this back to front to be perfectly honest yeah you're better off going with dabs with this than actual wipes because the wipes will wash it off so going on to the clump technique okay and this is the clump technique and all you basically do is this is gale force nines static grass it's exactly the same stuff as gw's okay is i grab a clump and i'll literally just push it on 
yeah and by dabbing it i'm sort of mimicking that sort of stand up effect and i don't want to push down too hard on this yeah but as you can see i'm going to grab a bit more and go around here yeah and it's covering it up really nicely and i'm going i'm trying to use this to to see where the edges are to be perfectly honest yeah now what i'm going to do is quickly just shake off the excess a bit yeah and as you can see it's quite clumpy and thick okay and what i'm going to do is to get more of it standing up i'm going to get a fleece and a balloon I'm going to use the static on the balloon to pick it up. And I don't know if you can see it, but it is actually picking it up. That's it. Now I'm using the static to get this to pick up. <coughs> so that's the clumping. Now, if you excuse me, what I'm going to do is quickly, I'm just going to go round the edges and quickly clump all the edges up. Okay, so it's all tied in. So here we have it guys, I've basically gone round with neat PVA and just a little water, gone round the edge and I have disturbed quite a lot of the, the, I've unsealed quite a lot of the, what you call it, flock as I've done it, but it's okay because it's got a covering of a static grass now, so it's not a problem. Like I say, PVA isn't waterproof, so you know, if you're going putting water or PVA back on an area that's been PVA'd, expect it to come loose. And obviously all I'm going to do now is just quickly Shake off the excess. I'm going to tap that. Sorry that you, you're sort of seeing it like this, guys, but I don't know where I can do it. And that's the clump method. Okay. Now, obviously, you can see quite clearly it's got quite a defined, clumpy static grass area. Okay. And what I'd like to show you now is just quickly. Yeah. Oh, I haven't done the balloon. So just give me one second. Yeah, and it's not a brilliant way of doing it, but if you've got no other way of get, generating a static charge, it's the best you've got. Like I say, it will make them stand up. Just tap it slightly. So there we are, and as you can see, you can't see where the flocks disappeared from. I mean, it is a complete covering. It's a little bright at the minute, but that's the white PVA underneath the flock, and as that dries, that'll settle down. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you quickly is, obviously I've got all this lovely flock on my base, and I'll have to clean that up in a minute, but this stuff, my shaker. And so what I'm going to do is, moving on to the shaker, yeah, I'm going to get some PVA here, yeah, a little bit of water on my brush, I'm just going to spread it around and blend it in with that PVA there, okay, and you can see what I'm doing there, quite nice and clear, okay, and all I'm going to do with my shaker so it should just come above it. And shake it. And this gives you a lot more control over how much is going down. Yeah, and you'll notice that's sort of blended in. The problem with this is that sort of flat grass because it's got no static charge. I mean, the clumping does give you sort of a rough, sticky up effect, but that's just laying flat. So what I need is my balloon. Yeah, and I just need to go over it, and you'll see that that automatically just picks all that up. Okay, now that's how you use the balloon, and that's how you use the shaker. Okay, and it's not as good as the clumping method, but there is more control over it. This is quite thick. 
What I do want to show you finally is this, okay? And this is a static grass applicator. And the way static grass is supposed to work is dead simple. You're supposed to pass a current between the glue and the applicator. And what that will do is make it stand up, okay? So this is, let me show you quickly. If I push that into the glue, okay, that pin, I press my button, whee! And I tap it, all of a sudden, that all stands up, okay? And what that little charge was then, that, okay? Obviously, it's where the currents meet and static charges. Uh, whenever you use one of these, it builds up quite a charge in the dish. So afterwards, it's really important that, you know, once your finger's off the button and you stop using it, you just touch them. So I'll use it quickly. I'll switch it off and then discharge, okay? The static shock is supposed to be a bit like you get off the car, get off, a car when you're getting out of it but to be perfectly honest I don't want to find out <laughs> I'll keep it away so what I'm going to do dead quickly is to show you how this goes on okay so I'll put a good amount of glue there okay bit there and using a slightly watered down brush and a slightly watered down brush is best because the water will help conduct the current yeah through the static grass and don't worry if you get on a bit of static grass that's already been there it's not a problem not a problem whatsoever and this technique is very much like when we learned to put the grit on on large pieces i.e you leave a bit blank of the glue and you sort of scatter in one area and then move on now obviously this is picking up a lot of gunk from the static grass because that hasn't dried yet. But if I get my static grass applicator and I load it up with static grass, yeah, not a massive amount. Okay, I get my pin. I put my pin in my glue. Yeah. The first thing I'm going to do is sort of shake it. And to be truthful, I'm left-handed guys, so just let me swap this over. So first shake it down and get a decent covering. Yeah, and it looks relatively flat, doesn't it? Yes, the wires are fiddly. Yeah. And then just tap it. And as you tap it, what will happen is it will start to stand up. So I'll put a bit more down. It's really hard working back to front on this. And just tap it. And do you see that? Do you see how it's standing up really nice there? Okay, let me bring that, oh, just discharge. Let me bring that up to the camera. Do you see that now? And that's gonna dry nice and standing up. So what I'm gonna do quickly is I'm gonna work around the rest of this, okay, and just add those patches in and blend it in a bit better. And there you have it, guys. Uh, basically, all I've done is I've used my static grass applicator to sort of build it up. Now, it is very clumpy at the minute, and that's because I'm waiting for it to dry. So I'll just lift it up so you can see. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll wait for it to dry, and we'll come back, and you can give me your opinion on it then. Okay. Like I say, you can use the clump method. That works quite well. You know, you can use this method and the balloon that works quite well but if you're serious about doing terrain and you're going to be doing a lot of it yeah then pick yourself up one of these because they're a hell of a lot easier and they're actually great fun yeah i have discovered what the shock feels like and it's not nice to be perfectly honest so make sure you discharge it okay otherwise you're gonna have problems now just so you can remember what discharge looks like okay ready there you go do you see that Let's put it right in front Okay, ready for the spark? Now I switched it off, I've just got to discharge it. Yeah. But anyway, that's the static grass applicator, and it is simple as that. Obviously, static grass gets everywhere, yeah, so I'm going to clean this up and let this dry. I'll see you in a minute, guys. So here we have the final piece, guys, and it's all dried and blown off now. Now, you may notice it's got a few extra bits. What happened was, as I was taking it through 
to through the kitchen to watch it to blow it in outside and get rid of the excess i slipped on on a, on a mopped floor and i went flying and this banged into my cheek and i pressed a few areas down so i had to touch them up and i don't think you can actually tell but there was a large flat thumbprint in there and over this side this fl this got flattened against my face and what happens is when you've got wet pva and static grass any direct pressure down will just flatten it out and it will go hard and it's not shiny but let's say plasticky okay so be aware of that but if it does happen all you've got to do is literally just put a little bit of pva in okay and just w once it's all dried put a little bit of pva in where it's flattened down and just add some more what you call it static grass and it works really well so let's have a look at our finished piece. Obviously I've added these little bits to sort of gradiate it in a bit rather than it being one line all the way around. Okay, because that looks better. And you can feather them and you can thin down how much you're putting on for the effect. But with the layers we actually did, straight off we had the clump and that's gone down like real wild grass. So anyone who's served will know what I mean by that. Okay, it's not sort of normal outside grass that we have in Civvy Street. It's sort of the wilderness grass because it's clumped, it's all over the place. Okay, after that we did a little bit of uh, with the shaker. Okay, and that's come out a lot thinner, but like I say, you have more control. And obviously if you want to put more down, then all you've got to do is just put more down when you're shaking it. And finally, we've got the pieces that we've done with the static grass applicator. And they've gone down slightly thinner than the actual clump because obviously we're not pressing loads in. But it has gone down far more natural and it does look more like grass. Now you may notice the odd little clump here and there. And that's where when I was mixing the, the two PVAs, they've got together and they've formed in a clump. I mean, what you can do is when it's drying, you can tap it down a little bit and that will flatten them out. Uh, alternatively you can wait till they're dry and you can just get a little bit of scissors and you can actually trim this stuff okay but overall that's the effect you're getting Ooh, that's the effect you're getting and it's really good so guys three basic ways of applying static grass you've got the clump method which is quick cheerful you know it gets the job done you get a little bit more precise with the shaker or if you want to get serious about it get one of these on eBay now remember they may be about 13 pound on eBay but if you didn't set a terrain, you could do all the terrain, and then if you want, you could sell it for a couple of quid less. Okay? These really are good. I can't recommend them enough, to be perfectly honest. So, that's static grass, guys, and that's that bit. Uh, any questions or comments on static grass, you know, just like everything, just throw them in the comments. Uh, any additions, anything you think that you can add to it, throw it in the comments. But that's overall. I really hope this bit helps you guys. So, give it a go.